Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to continue our deep dive series of videos into the compound radius. And uh, I've got a bunch of examples here. We're going to show you um, some all the different examples that I have in front of me. We're going to talk about the theory of the compound radius. And we're going to talk about the real life applications for said compound radius. Okay, so a handful of people have called me out on compound radius versus conical radius and what the differences are. If you watched my last video where I talked about what a compound radius is, um, I, I addressed some of that. We're going to address a little bit more of that today. Um, if you also watched the video on me shaping the, the radius or doing the radius on the, um, the radius sanding jig on this neck here, we're going to talk a lot about this because this is sort of the whole reason for me doing this. I'm not going to offer conical radius fretboards as a standard feature on guitars. If you guys want to pay more for that, we can do that. But I think after you watch this video, we're going to dispel some of the myths versus the facts. So um, let's talk a little bit more about what a conical radius is. So as you'll remember, on this fretboard, we go from a 10-inch radius here to about a 16 inch radius here. So if you imagine, I have this great big safety cone out here. This, if you were to take a section of this cone, you would have a conical radius. Now, you've probably seen the various pictures of why you want to have a conical radius fretboard on your guitar. And they use something like this, only they use, it's even a more aggressive shape and it's squattier. So, <clears throat> The problem with this is that while it's easy to look at it and go, oh, that's what a compound or conical or variable radius is, it kind of overstates the, uh, what's actually going on on your guitar. So remember, a radius is from the center of a circle out to the edge, not all the way from the edge to edge. So if you look, this radius here is probably about a one inch radius to about a four inch radius. Now, Nolan's guitar has a one to four um, conical radius, but this gives you an idea. But remember, on a 10 to 16, you would have a 20 inch circle and a 32 inch circle. So it'd be quite a bit more gradual. The other thing is, you'll notice that a guitar neck is about two inches longer than this cone and the the uh, taper is considerably more gradual. So when you see people describe conical radius and they have this cone here, it's a great visual aid, but it kind of overstates what's actually going on. So what we're going to show you now is um, what some radiuses look like and um, the differences, and you can get an idea of what, what's going on there. So this Explorer neck here is for Bart, and it has a 12-inch radius. The reason it has a 12 inch radius is because it's getting a tunomatic and stop tail bridge. Now the tunomatic can go from you know 10 to 12 pretty easily, but Bart wanted 12 because he wanted tunomatic. So let me show you what that looks like. Now we have my Stumac gauges here, and I have my flashlight. I'm going to um, put this gauge on the uh, on the the fretboard, and you're going to be able to see what that looks like. All right, so I got some light shining under there. It probably isn't exactly perfectly right, is it? Yep. Can you see? Okay. So it's it's damn there's, close. Yeah, there's no light shining through. Okay, so that's that's a, a straight up twelve. Now you have to, you know, make sure that you believe that Stuart McDonald made this gauge correctly, and I have every reason to believe that they did. All right, now let's move over to our compound radius. Oh, hold on. So let's let's talk about this. So it's twelve inches of radius here. It's 12 inches of radius here, and at the very last fret, because this is going to be a 22 fret, it's 12 inches of radius there. And there might be a little bit of light shining through there because it's wood. No, it's just, okay. All right, so that's what it looks like with light shining through, and that's with no light. All right, now let's move over to our, our compound radius that we did the other day. It should be 10 inches or thereabouts right here. And... If we move down the neck, you'll start to see light under the various portions. And you see it there, Chris? Mm -hmm. All right, so now let's change that to the 12. And it probably is going to look a little bit better right there. Yeah, you can't see any light. Okay, so we're about 12 inches here. Now I'm going to keep it on the 12. 
And I come down here to the very, very end and you'll probably see a lot more light shining through there than you, than you did. Now, I think it's about 15. <clears throat> so let me get my 15 inch radius gauge. And so that's really no light shining through there. So you think, wow, wow, well it moved in, you know, 20 inches of fretboard, it changed from 10 inch radius to a 15 inch radius, or a 20 inch circle to a 30 inch circle. But what that actually looks like in real life, <coughs> what I want to show you guys is, if this was a, if you looked at the 10 inch radius, you can probably see quite a bit of light shining under there, right? So how much light, what does that gap actually mean? Well, I have a 10 thousandths piece of shim stock right here. And this 10 thousandths piece of shim stock is precision made and it just barely, listen, it just barely goes under there. So that's the difference between a 10, or a 10 inch radius and a 12 inch radius. What else is a... a a uh, ten thousandths thickness. Well, so an E string <laughs> is about ten thousandths. A high E string. A high E string. Here's a here's a point four six millimeter pick. As you can see, that does not go under there. And remember, we've gone from ten to fifteen. So a lot of you guys who say I have a twelve to fourteen, um, it's even less than that. Uh, so. I guess what I'm getting at, y'all, is if you like the idea of compound radius, then rock on. If, you, if the only thing that's holding you back from being the next guitar superstar is that your guitar doesn't have a compound radius, I think there might be a few other things holding you back. Um, so let's talk about, and remember, this is just the wood. Uh, we still have to press frets in here or pound them in with a hammer. And because we press frets in with a radius call, we would need to switch calls probably two or three times to do this. And some would be exactly 10, some would be exactly 12, and one would be exactly 15. And everything else would sort of be right in the middle and it really wouldn't matter. You know why? Because it doesn't really matter because the greatest amount of variation is 10 thousandths or so, maybe 11 thousandths. Um, and then you still have to level your frets. So as you start stacking those tolerances up, it is very possible that you could go from a maximum deviation of 10 or 11 thousandths to even less after you start leveling stuff, pressing frets in. Um, so, you know, uh, conical radius is neat, but I really don't think uh, you guys are going to see a giant amount of difference going from, say, a 12 inch straight radius to uh, 10 to 15 or 10 to 16. So unless you just like it, I would say don't even bother. And I'm not alone. Um, I looked through a bunch of guys' signature guitars and before we go any further, Eddie Van Halen's guitar that he makes now, the EVH, it does have a compound radius. Um, but Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Kirk Hammett, uh, those guys all have straight radius fretboards. And another thing that I want to tell you is that everything cool, everything awesome that's ever been recorded with an electric guitar had a straight radius fretboard. So, <laughs> so, let's, so let's move on. So, so that, is, that is the whole, in a nutshell, compound radius. Now I want to talk about, oh, go ahead. Take the 15 inch radius and put it on the 10 at the nut. Okay. Chris has reminded me that we want to take the 10 inch radius or the 15 inch radius that works right down here and move it to the nut, which as you might remember, was 10 inch. Well, wait a second. So as you can see, there's some light shining in on the edges where there's usually no strings. So that's kind of gives you an idea Put the 12 on there now, too. I have Just to see which... The 12 is going to be... Yeah, it's going to be... That's 7 and a quarter. Okay. Here there is the 12. Go. All right. 
All right, I would be remiss if I didn't tell you guys about the theory of why you want a conical radius fretboard. So I'm going to use the big, the big safety cone again as, as a visual aid. So everybody says because the, the nut is narrower than the heel, that you, that because the strings are all, you know, roughly the same distance apart, but because you've got something, uh, a slimmer nut than you do a heel, well, if they were all scrunched together straight, it would be, the strings down here would be quite a bit lower or closer to the fretboard than here. So you want this radius to be flatter. Um, so as you can see here, we've got, you know, these are, these are, you get the idea of what I'm talking about. But remember, there's 10 thousandths worth of difference between um, the, the, the most deviation on the conical radius that we did and no one's fretboard looks like this orange safety cone. Maybe your violin does, but I think that that's so that you can actually bow individual strings. Isn't that what we decided, Chris? Yep. Okay, so the idea is, well, hey man, you can play chords really nice and easy right here, but you can solo a lot easier here. Maybe, and if you think that you can, then I would say get a compound radius or conical radius or variable radius fretboard and rock out. If you don't have one, um, I think you're probably fine. Now, it is possible to go with a very, very round radius like the seven and a quarter radius and not have the strings be have the strings be close enough to the fretboard down here that you could fret out, but if you when you when you bend and things, um, you know, like Stevie Ray's guitar, which I think actually went, it wasn't actually seven and a quarter anymore. Somebody had made it twelve. In fact, I know a guy who claims that he was the person who did that. Um, but if you have a ten inch radius or a twelve inch radius, um, you don't really have to worry about that stuff. Again, all the really great things that were recorded with Gibsons. Uh, when rock and roll was super cool, nobody had a conical radius fretboard. Um, but if, like I say, again, I don't have a dog in the, in the fight of if you should or shouldn't have one of these things. If you like it, absolutely get one and, um, you know, and love it and, and go crazy. Let's talk about something that we are working on, and that is, uh, this is a prototype for what we're calling the infinity radius fretboard. Um, this is going to basically be flat. So no radius at all, but it looks cool. And you know, um, classical guitars don't have any radius. They're dead flat. So we're going to put this together. Uh, we're going to bang frets into it and um, shape it. And we're going to give this to Jeff LaQuatra to play because he's the badass classical dude who we know and see if he even notices uh, if it doesn't have a radius. The other thing I think would be cool would be to put in... Um, uh, no actual frets, but contrasting wood and leave this mostly square on the back, just round this edge over and have a really neat slide neck that would retrofit onto a Telecaster. I think that would be cool. I would like to play that. Maybe we could even put the, uh, the Hipshot detuner on that Josh from Hipshot thinks we should put on all our daily drivers on that. I think that'd be neat. All right, so now you know where I come down on conical or compound or variable radius fretboards and um, what I think. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't really matter what I think. I want to hear what you guys think. And I'm going to give you all a chance to tell me what you think or ask me questions. Chris is going to be there too. You can ask Chris or I questions about fretboards and radiuses. And we're going to do another live Q&A. And that's going to be Sunday, February 17th at 4 o'clock Mountain Time. Be sure to tune in and get a bunch of questions ready for that. And uh, we'd love to hear what you guys think and your experiences with different radiuses and different necks. And um, we can just talk about that for an hour or so and have a good time. And there's probably going to be some beer drinking too. But we're done with this video for today. If you have any questions about what we did in this video or and you don't want to share them for the live Q&A, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. I read everybody's comments in the comment section, guys. Um, if you uh, thought this video was good, give us the thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like content like this, you might want to consider going over to our Patreon page and becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you neat stuff like this. Um, and we've gotten a lot of new Patreons lately, so thank you to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon. Remember, we are entirely viewer funded. 
So until next time, and next time probably won't be the 17th, but if it is, until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching, everybody. I